The only texture painting video that you will ever need is ahead of you. Pay attention. I painted the livery of this vehicle using this technique. So pay attention. You're going to learn how to do that. All of this is in my book. Don't forget to check it out. The link is in the description. Now, before I can show you how to actually texture paint a decal onto an object in Blender, we need to actually have a decal, all right? So either you can download a little sticker or a transparent image from Google like this one over here, or we can create our own, all right? I like to create my own because I don't want to uh, have any copyright trouble. So I'm just going to quickly do that in paint net. And as an example, we're just going to make a single smiley transparent background. So now that we have an image or a decal or a sticker that we can paint onto an object, now we have to prepare our object for texture painting. Okay, let's do that very quickly and very simply with this cube right here. We don't need anything else. We're going to take the cube and we're going to UV unwrap it. You go to edit mode, select everything, press U and UV unwrap the object. In this case, we need to first mark the seams before we can wrap it. So we're going to select everything, press Control E, mark seam, then U and unwrap. But if you don't want to do that, you can also just press Smart UV Unwrap and it's going to automatically figure out how to unwrap the object. I have a separate tutorial for that in more details. You can check that out. You'll find it on my channel. Now, we're going to separate our screen into two parts right here. We can click on this bar right here underneath these little tabs. Right click, we're going to do a vertical split and we're going to have this line and we can just click anywhere and we can split our screen into two different screens, two different workplaces. Okay, now we have two 3D views. We don't need those. One of them, we need to look at the picture that we're going to use to texture paint, okay? So we're gonna go up here and we're going to go to our image editor and we don't have any image loaded into Blender yet, so it's just blank space. Now, go up here and add a new image, okay? So we're going to generate a new empty blank image in Blender and we're gonna name that texture painting. And the resolution and the width doesn't matter. You can, for now, it just doesn't really make any difference. We have to make sure it's black and all this other stuff, we're just gonna leave it by default. We're gonna click okay and now we have a black plain black image, okay? And now we need to apply this image to our cube, okay? So we're gonna go up and do the shading tab because this is where we control the materials and the shading and all that different stuff. And we can see the material which is already applied to our cube. If you don't have a material, you can just click new material. If you don't have any material, new material, we have that. We're going to add a new image texture, okay? We're going to load up that image that we just created. We call the texture paint. I'm going to plug that into base color, all right? And now that texture is displayed on our cube. It's just a black paint. That's just, there's no the image on it, nothing. Just a black. That's why the cube just turned completely black. We can also add a node wrangler by pressing control T. If you don't have a node wrangler enabled, it's a great way to map images onto your uh, objects. You can just add, enable it as a simple add on. Just go to the node wrangler. You'll find it there. So now that we have our image texture, our plain black image on our cube, let's go back to the texture painting tab. Okay, you can see the separate faces over here. So now into texture painting by default. We get a brush and we get our image that we created on the cube, okay? In the 3D view, we can just use the brush over the cube and just paint over it, just a default white brush. Or we can also do it with some more control over here on, this, uh, on the other screen where we're painting on the image on a flat surface. And then you can also see that projected on the cube, okay? Now, we basically just have to replace our brush with a stencil, okay? So we're going to take an image so that every time we brush over it, that image is going to be pasted onto the cube. It's still going to be like a sticker, okay? Anything that's transparent, it's not going to be pasted. So we can do that in a very, very simple way, okay? In the little, in the texture painting menu or the texture paint little uh, screen over here, we're going to press N to load up this menu on the side. And then we have all these different tools over here, but we want to scroll down and find texture. And in this texture menu, we're going to click on new texture, okay? We have this new texture right here, black. And then we're going to go over here on the side, underneath the materials, we will find, what is the name of this tab? Texture properties, okay? Now, I already created one, but we're gonna delete that because for the purpose of this video, we need to create a new one, right? So we're gonna create a new one. And then over here, we're going to load up the smiley or the sticker that you downloaded with a transparent background, okay? So now we have our smiley loaded up and we have that over here on the side. So now if we start texture painting, it kind of just tiles the smiley over the cube. So it doesn't really make much sense, but it can be useful in some cases for some purposes. Instead of using that, we want to change the mapping mode to stencil, okay? So now we have the smiley on our screen in the corner of our screen. And if we paint over this part, it is going to paint behind that onto the cube. Okay, as you can see, it doesn't make any sense now because we didn't adjust it. But if we zoom in a little bit, we can paint over the smiley. And now that is projected on the cube exactly the way we want it to. And we can also move this image around to have a little bit more control by right clicking on it and just moving it around. Where there's some more controls and more shortcuts. Like, for example, if you hold shift and you right click and then you move it, your mouse up and down, it's going to change the size of the object. I think you can also rotate it in some other way. Control, maybe out yeah, with control and right click. You can rotate the image and then you can just paste it wherever you want. Okay, we're going to rotate it a little bit more, paste it on this side, on that side, whichever side we want it on. And now you can just texture paint as much as you like. And you can use any image in the world. You can also change the color. If we change it to blue, it's going to change 
color, but I think it works as a multiplier. So it multiplies it with a blue color and that creates something different and ugly. But you can use any image in the world and any sticker you want and put it on any surface and you basically end up uh, with a work like this livery that you have right here. I use the exact same technique on this uh, race ship over here on this little spaceship, race ship, whatever you want to call it. I painted the livery using just images that I've created myself just to avoid copyright busts. I designed them in paint net. I know they don't look that impressive, but I think they turned out all right. And I have my image over here on the side and I just load up an image the same way we do with the smiley and the cube. Okay. And I just go over here and I can also rotate it and place it whatever way I want uh, in the image editor here. I just place it on the right place. I paint over it with a simple brush. All right. And then when I paint over it, I have to make sure I get every part. When I paint over it, it's going to appear on a model over here. And that's the same thing I did with all these other uh, little decals over here, these numbers and all these ads and all that stuff. That's pretty much it. That's all you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next one.